Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about House of the Dragon. This is a Game of Thrones prequel show. I'm going to right off the bat say I'm not a fan of George R. R. Martin's books. And although I think the show, Game of Thrones, the original, was better than the books... I'm not a fan of that show either. Now, I've gone over that in a podcast. I do recognize the greatness of the original Game of Thrones. It's more of that not for me type thing. But I'll say they destroyed the ending for sure in the original and butchered some of the characters that had some real growth. Overall, though, I know why people love it. I see the bar it raised in TV and television. Some of the performances and the characters are spot on, amazing. I just don't get into the story. And it just didn't, you know, didn't, you know, drive with me right. And going through it, I got annoyed, stopped, went back, finished it. So now here we are with... House of the Dragon, a prequel to that show. I think it's set about 170 years before. Um, it's based on a book that he took out of his main book or something he was going to do um, in his far-reaching novels that he's still, you know, writing. And he segmented it into like two parts, and it's, a, it's called uh, Fire and Blood. And I think the show is taking the second half of that book and going with it. So we get to find out about, you know, Targaryens. And I gotta say, there's some great actors in this show. But there's some terrible ones that draw my attention. This show is, okay, so it's created by Ryan Condal and George R. R. Martin. Uh, Patty Constantine, great actor, pulls it off. Matt Smith, a little overboard, doesn't... It almost... Him and another character kind of feel like it's uh, LARPing, you know, like they're role-playing or something like that. It just doesn't feel genuine, but that's just me. Great actors, I guess, in that sense. Uh, Emma Darcy, uh, you know, whatever, I don't really care. I like the child versions better, and I'll get to that, too. Um, I think Reese... Itna Ifans, whatever his name is, he's probably the best guy in the show. I think he was Kurt Connors in the Spider-Man movie, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I think. In any case, these are good actors, great performances here and there, and they're awesome, stunning visuals. But coming out of this, I'm not a fan. I gotta give credit to the music, I think, in... Doing what it's supposed to do very well. So it's got that going for it. And again, there's some great spot on actors and actresses. Um, when they do the transition from, uh, I guess, young kids, teenagers to uh, more adults. Because you never fucking know in this show. Um, they get this, uh, one of the most spot on ones is like... Um, one of the the chick who becomes a fucking queen, uh, Olivia Cook, and so the transitions are pretty good in that sense. Like, oh, it looks like them, but then they do stupid things and make a decision to not recast somebody older, and they somehow make them look like younger. And that's the asshole Crispin, whatever the fuck, one of the worst characters ever. I'm just bored throughout most of the show. Again, this could be a more this isn't for me type thing, but I'm going to lean towards it's not as good as the original Game of Thrones, but, you know, it's the first season. It's going to, you know, maybe go in different directions like the original did. When we watched the original first season, watching um, Boromir, you know, uh, get his head cut off, whatever, and ending like that, me and my friends that were following it at the time, uh, noticed, like, we made fun of the show throughout the first season, but saw, you know, it had that potential for greatness. And, and again, like I say this in a lot of podcasts, I'm a role player. I play Dungeons and Dragons since I'm like 
10 years old, dungeon master, game master, the whole deal. And the fantasy element's just not fun enough for me in this. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but as much as they butchered the works of Tolkien to do Rings of Power, I fucking like that show better. I had I got through the, sh- the season, maybe rolling my eyes and knowing that the purists, the Tolkien purists, were going to go bananas. But it felt like a fun show. Like, it had its serious tones, but there was enough pacing and not drivel boredom stuff. And I can't believe it, but I would say the Rings of Power is better than this. But for me, as a tasting, again, this high-quality television show, probably high production, and it also leads to some really good CGI and some bad CGI, and I guess that's normal, but a lot of shows can push through that, and it's not something that's glaring to me, like the fun I had watching She-Hulk, right? Just, that's just me, and I'm not gonna uh, defend it as one of the greatest shows, but I had fun watching it, and I tried to do fun stuff. Here, it's just like medieval C-sections and incest and spouting like nonsense that you don't feel characters could ever have naturally developed into. So it's just jarring for me. And then you got time jumps that are unbelievably dumb to me. Like, how many seasons did they give you? Like, don't you want to flesh it out a little bit more? And then another jump of a jump within the jump. It just felt fucking insane. I didn't enjoy that part of it at all. And then we're getting to the some actors and just the things that sh- just seem to shock you. And no real depth to it. Like predicaments that are put onto the screen by fucking bullshit. They're at this fucking like um, party, pre-party thing and whatever the fuck. Just bullshit, and the guy's looking, he says, oh, I know who her, you know, paramour is, and he's like, who, Uh, Sir Crispin, because he's looking at it, and it's just like, he's her protector, like, why wouldn't he be watching her closely, and you know it was not right, like, it just felt so forced, and such bullshit, then he gets his face smashed in, I think his name was Joffrey, like, the lover of, um, uh, the princess's betrothed or whatever. And I think they even did a blackmail thing. And he's like, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the guy's like a knight with chastity. And just, it didn't lead to the shit that is nonsense that the other things lead to. And it's, oh my God, someone's looking at this. They fucked and all this shit about, you know, woman stuff. And, you know, it's just, I don't even care if it's more for real or it's got, um, you know, a badass fucking, you know, tone to it. Like, it doesn't thrill me. It doesn't keep me interested. It's just like, oh, shocking, whatever. If they come from this time jump, right? It's like, I don't know, fucking 10 years, whatever the fuck. And the fucking queen, out of nowhere, the new queen, Olivia Cook's character, whatever, turns to the supposed father of, um... The princess is kidding, goes, hey, keep trying. Maybe you'll get one that looks like you. Now, I don't give a fuck about the books, okay? I've never enjoyed his writing or, you know, in the books. And I don't really give a fuck. But you got to set things up better. Give me a little bit more, you know, um, build up to this. When, you know, when she becomes the cunt. And then I'm supposed to believe in her in-depth sorrow or feelings at certain points about even her husband, arrange whatever the fucking marriage, whatever, and the family she's fucking spouting out because that's what the show does, you know. We're gonna squeeze out fucking heirs and play the house game of houses, whatever the fuck, you know. I don't enjoy it, and it's not something that I immediately turned off. Uh, you know, I wanna. Give things a shot and, you know, got through it eventually, but was bored through this. Despite some of the great performances, some 
really good uh like I said, the music is superb. Um there's a scene I think in the last episode where the kids getting chased by the dragon and it's like stalking him in the storm. It was excellent. But again, darkness everywhere. Bullshit dialogue that's fucking mind boggling scenarios that are fucking brought up just to make sure they get to this next set or something. It just feels like that. You got this fucking idiot Laris around his fucking who's the father of Daenerys' babies they don't look like her husband and he arranged marriage shit and he's gay and it's just fucking bullshit. And it just gets on my nerves like you're gonna do this and pace it better. It doesn't have to be fucking Xena Warrior Princess but you know, I'm going to watch that when it's on. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't get the excitement when I'm four episodes into this. And I know I'm going to do all ten because I want to do a podcast on it. So it's like, I'm going to really try to get the enjoyment out of it. And like I said, there are some of the performances in here. Uh, just amazing. Uh, the transition from child actor to adult actor spot on. But I'm not riveted. I'm not setting what they're supposed to be setting me up for. If you're going to do political intrigue and the politics, politicking, as they say in the show, I think, I'm going to need a better pacing. I'm going to need more believable fucking scenarios. It's just looks can lead to fucking political intrigue of treason and fucking... You know, oh, I'm going to bash this guy's skull in and kill him. But when it happens to me, uh, you know, oh, I, I just, oh, I, I pulled it off. I I exposed this guy as the father of the baby. <laughs> and I'll spit out my blood. Now, why isn't your face caved in? This is an important character from the book. I don't care. Because you're adapting this to TV. And yes, just like I said about the Rings of Power, they butchered Tolkien's wor world and his thing and it's going to be their vision they're going with and maybe they'll course correct whatever I don't care about the source material here that's to be honest I, like I said I don't know I read the four books when they came out the TV show I think it was like two and then like three came out anyway I'm not into the source material but if you're going to put it on TV, you might, might want to make some changes. Give me some, you know, in-depth uh, story instead of a 10-year gap. You know, make me feel like this new queen is really feeling the burden and the stress on her family. Because her father's the hand and her best friend is the princess. And the king without a male heir names his princess. She sits up by his throne. And then, okay, <laughs> I know why Baromir died. In, I said Baromir, but Lord Stark died in the first season of the original. And his the actions that led to it, his righteousness, his virtue, you know, all the things that made him who he is. I'm going to give a spoiler alert, okay? The fucking king in here is done in by, like, tetanus or some kind of infection from his throne and I find it stupid like I think if I'm right about in the books he, he once he gets cut and I think it's worse than it is in the show he, like he won't sit on it no more or something but the show is like he's sitting on it, he's getting little nicks and cuts get off the fucking throne and stop it with the stupid fucking look and it's dumb. I I don't get it, you know? So we can watch him become like a decayed fucking monster with a heart and a fucking great performance. This guy nails it. Got to give him that. Uh, say his name again. And it's Patty Cons Considine. King of the series. Fucking amazing. I mean, he's fucking great. And now the Matt Smith guy is okay at times when it's subtle. But I don't like when he tries to go overboard or whatever, and it just doesn't work for me. Um, now, they do the kid thing. They got, like, <laughs> it's like 
Lord of the Flies, I guess, like, they don't fucking monitor these. These kids are supposed to be special. They're fucking inheritors of fucking thrones and titles up the ass, right? And they're running around like, it's just, the kid gets his fucking eye taken out. Oh, so you got the characters, right? And some of the fucking transitions to older are fucking horrible. So, you got a guy who looks like he's 50, and he's supposed to be like the second youngest of the family, and Aegon, and Egon, Amon, like, fucking dumb. And it, cr the crux of the uh, mistake is so unbelievably dumb that I, I can't do it. I can't buy it. I don't buy it. So by the end of the season, as you're getting through these arcs, you know, boring, boring for me. A little bit of excitement with the crab feeder. Um, some of the politics were all good. You know, it ha happens. But I'm not invested. You get this storyline where the king is dying and he's talking about the prince that was promised, Aegon. And the wife's like, our son? Yeah, our son. Unite the right. Look. You're fucked. Just stop it. The guy fucking pronounced his daughter clean all her feelings and you know the turmoil of her having to do the right thing wrong thing i don't buy it i didn't buy it at all maybe it's the time jumps that are you know forcing me to reconcile that she's gonna take her dying husband's words as anything but rambling and stick to i'm gonna have my son take the throne and not what he wanted, which was whatever. And then she's going to have to go, which she does, I think, to her father. It's like, but no one was there. <laughs> it's just as good as just making your shit up out of nowhere. And it, the show's got balls to fucking make. You think that so many things are important, like, oh, calling people bastards. And, you know, that's treason. Well, get half your head cut off or, you know exposing the it's just bullshit i don't buy it they're fucking oh you don't know what the fuck is going on it's this is the father now i thought it was crispin maybe it was the father but no he's butthurt and he's a bitch now because i don't know he fucking right after they fuck because i don't know what the fuck's going on they think she fucks her uncle well she wanted to i guess but he got fucking drunk she goes back and she fucks the chastity night asshole face and he's like they're on a boat together you're on a fucking boat everybody can see you your gestures your the passion the actor tries to put into his fucking acting about how at first look let's go away right you know nonchalant hey no oh, we're both on the same boat let's go you know let's leave this world no names we'll just live and she's like oh i got a heritage and a fucking destiny and he starts flipping out, like, I oh, shit my soil, my cloak, and, so, and he's impassioned, and you're on a boat. Like, they will flaunt the stupidest shit that would normally, in less than that, create a whole fucking scene of chaos. It's just, suit, if it suits them, and I don't get into that that much, and the show just does it too much, it's like relying on that. And again, this has got great fucking music. Who's the composer here? Uh, Ramin Dijwadi. Kudos for that fucking guy. He knows how to nail scenes, though, and, you know, get that shit going for sure. I can definitely remember key points and just, you know, the music really tries its best. Uh... And again, with the time jumps, the plot development towards the end of the show. I don't, I didn't care. I didn't buy the bullshit. They're in the fucking chamber at the end. The, the, the king dies, and they're all like, "Okay, ready with the plan." And the queen's like, "What? You, you guys were planning, uh, you know, this all behind my back? Well, yeah, we didn't want to get you involved in the dirty whatever. But you know, now that the king's dead and..." You said is he wants Aegon because they didn't give a fuck. They wanted Aegon, whatever fucking. Anyway, this guy gets up and he's like, "Why well, can't we can't believe the mother?" And it's like common sense. And Sir Crispin fuckface 
kills him. Like, just smashes his head on the table. And the King's Guard guy pulls out the sword. And then nothing fucking happens. This asshole fucking murders a guy, beats him to death in a fucking ballroom party in front of everybody and they're all screaming nothing happens he goes to kill himself and the new princess to be whatever the fuck uh, stops him and then it leads to, like this the stupidest circumstances and like evidence leads to these breakthroughs of bullshit and I'm not gonna buy it for this fucking whole season of what is it, 10 episodes? And yeah, you've got highlights or moments that actors nail nail this. And, you know, they, maybe potential to outdo the original, maybe. I mean, the king's not, but where does it go from there? And um, you're lost at some points because of the jumps and what they force you to do to believe things like this fucking princess is like, oh shit, you know what? You uh, okay? So, all right. Matt Smith's character, Damon, I think his name is, just appears like a Jedi out of nowhere in the mountains, and this chick is riding her fucking horse. It's his wife, I guess. They don't, they haven't fucked. They hate each other, and by sheer luck, the horse rears up and. She gets, like, paralyzed, like, and his thoughts would go kill her to begin with, but it, then he, like, steps in her arms, and I think, like, it's his, it's them letting us know, or whatever, he knows that she's paralyzed, and he looks like he goes to walk away and leave it there, and then she's like, oh, you can't finish, and you couldn't finish, all right, first off, the first thing you want to write is, they say you couldn't, I knew they said you couldn't finish, so you want not him to think you think that that, Everybody thinks that, and that's what she heard. Anyway, he picks up a rock and supposedly crushes her neck, his skull, whatever. And now he's free from that wife. This is like earlier, but it's such bullshit. And it, it like again, it, it, they want me to show, they want, me, they want to show and make me believe things that I don't find investment in. And then and when you got the time jumps and they're older, and again, I was getting to the point, I was getting to. She's like, oh, we, we should marry her and her uncle. Well, you know, Targaryen shit. And she loves the fucking nonsense. So let's montage us killing my husband. Wink, wink. And he gets, we'll send him away with his lover. Like, fucking. I, then the mother, the princess of the queen who never was bullshit. Good, good performance in. Like I said, you find spots in here that are good. She fucking, like, tolerates the bullshit afterwards after what they show her is her son dead. Like, what the fuck is, uh, what? So, the son got killed in a sword fight and they dipped him in acid or boiled him or something? Like, you can't tell that's not your son? It's a great performance, whatever. Um, just... Finding these pieces that I can call out and say that, uh, you know, intrigued me or, you know, but nothing that's keeping me going, like, from episode to episode, like, with a smile or, you know, even if it's a drama, you know, there's got to be some rhythm to it that keeps me, you know, invested at points. And whatever they cut to, they went to, just never worked with the fucking kids and the bullshit. To the who father, whatever. You know, this fucking creepy guy all of a sudden. It's crazy. They're, um, the creepy guy kills his older brother, who's the father of the fucking princess's kids. But you're know, not supposed to know that. It's supposed to be the Valerian fucking cousin father, whatever. And then. His father, who was the hand, who replaced uh, um, Otto guy. And then Otto comes back out of nowhere, and he's the fucking hand. And they use one line like, oh, why don't you go talk to your father? I guess hinting that, oh, let's ask him to come back. But this fucking cripple, creepy fuck, 
kills his brother and his father in a fire. And as they're on the boat, the kids who kind of hint at that, I don't know if at this point, they're like, oh, that's our father, right? Say, oh, we should be mourning Sir Handsome fucking his father. Um, not here. And then she explains to them that they're not family. This is family. I think the fucking wife of, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Damon's wife dies. She can't have a baby. She burns herself to death. It's fucking stupid shit. And they're on the boat. So, and then as they say, no, we, the kids are like, we should be there. You know who should be there? The creepy guy. Cause that's his fucking, he's like the heir. Or whatever the fuck, right? So why is he on the boat in the most dumbest fucking position with this fucking cane and his stupid face? Shouldn't he be handling that? Like, oh, but now he has new duties? Like, oh, man, just... I don't care in some scenes how good some of the dragons look. If it doesn't pay off, well... The scene with Damon and going after the crab it was like the beginning chapter kind of stuff first you know a couple episodes that were gearing you up the politics take over and the incest and the fucking nonsense and it just i guess could be done better is my you know uh summation of that part of it but when you got to get to certain points of the story and even if you're following the books i mean i don't know I'm not going to be surprised if a lot of people like the show, if, if critics are, you know, raving about it. The skin, the fucking hair, it, it just seems like, um, I don't know, I don't, it feels faker to me, you know, it's like going to medieval times or the fairs around, you know, where I bought my sword and shit, it was just... I don't know. Maybe it's like watching the fucking British thing when they put on the white wigs of powder or something. I, it just doesn't sit well with me. I, I didn't I, look. Well, uh, the original Game of Thrones and Cersei and stuff, all that stuff, I bought for the most part. I mean, again, you know, bored me and aggravated me to get through it. But this show, I'm not on board with it. Like. I think the original Game of Thrones, I think it was the third season, I was still on board. You know, they were doing things right, maybe here and there, but you can see they were refining it and making it real good. Then, like at the fourth season, I just stopped. I just, I don't know what they were doing in Tywin. They were just starting to, you know, he had just come off the defending the city type thing. And I don't know, it just lost me and it took me a while to try. And I got back to season six and. The blunders that fucking happened for the original Game of Thrones last season just for me is a disaster in that sense. But I can't see me investing in this. Like I don't care enough. I don't stone um wanna go through with this. Even if this was just oh you got through the worst of it, you know, we're gonna have the Dance of Dragons, you know, the War of Succession and who's the real king and we kind of know where it's going unless they're going to, you know, do something different, right? They might do a shock and say, oh, we didn't say we would faithfully adapt it. I, I don't know. And I don't care enough. Like I said, I'm not a fan of his where, like, even Tolkien's Cimmerillion, you know, doesn't read like a fucking fiction, like a fantasy novel. You know, but I've read it so many times. I never go back and bother with those books. Just the Song of Ice and Fire stuff, which is just chapters and, like, whole sections of the book are just boredom. You know, I don't care how edgy you are with throwing shit at people, using the curse words, and, you know, guys fucking their sisters, and the tradition of marrying into your families, and showing some of the ill effects of that, you know, with the stillborns and malformed, whatever. But I don't know, you got ten episodes, and... It felt like to me, why not make the first season or two the kids and show that development? All right, maybe that's a little too long. And I don't know how that would have worked. But you did this initial gap, of, and it felt weird. Like, again, if it's six months, and then it's ten years, and then it's two years, and then out of nowhere, it's like, 
I haven't seen my husband for six years, my or whatever. What? And then the kids look different, and they're, like, one just clearly looks older than everybody, but he's not the oldest. Moments in the show that are supposed to be super impactful, they don't ring true. And I think that's what I'm starting to feel. Like, even the source material might not have been, you know, you might have needed a little more, um refinement maybe i don't know i just feel like it's beating me over the head with certain things certain things i'm supposed to believe and it, it feels like you're just forcing this on me this is just for shock no you did not know he was fucking he had sex one time with the princess at a fucking ball by looking at him staring at the person he's protecting and we're gonna blow that up into, oh, let's, you know, have him beat the guy to death. You can't have people blackmailing and what's going to happen there. Where are we going to go? Oh, nothing. You know, maybe I'll kill myself and then I'll get stopped by the princess. And these things keep happening. And then when it shouldn't be an issue, like, oh, the, the princess was given a certain tea to take care of things in case I guess she got pregnant, like if they didn't believe she was with her uncle or not. Because one of the main things is the uncle, Damon, and did she have sex with him in a brothel? And it's just fucking painstaking when the guy's like, tell me what the fuck happened. Ooh, they were seen together. What do you mean? Decoupling. It's, it's fucking. Like I said, the, the King Constantine guy, uh, Patty, just amazing, but almost everything he does in the show. But we're going to keep adding to these, this, I don't know, style of writing and things that just doesn't jive with me. But I am understanding my bias and, again, just not a fan of the work itself. Is it probably an issue? And, again, it's shocking to even believe that, like, I enjoyed watching the butchering of Tolkien's work. And I'm... By the way, I'm a f big fan of Legends of the Seeker, which is like a two-season show that kind of butchered Terry Goodkind's uh, work. But I fucking loved it, what they, they tried to do. I mean, I just need that balance. And I'm dreading this D&D &D movie, almost, because, I don't know, I'm afraid it's going to be too campiness, and I just want to balance. And I think this balance is way too much in one on one end, and it just doesn't... um doesn't resonate with me, doesn't feel like I'm invested enough consistently because again the music is phenomenal, it just fucking works and some of, you can't deny some of the performers and the material they're given, they elevate it without a doubt even mundane bullshit can be elevated and they've got actors that are doing that um, again though, but when you're coming from a break or, or a time jump and there's supposed to be some humanity still in some of these people and they say or do the stupidest fucking things I don't I didn't buy it like I'm not ready by episode 9 with this queen to let the fucking guy get his head smashed blood nothing happens to Crispin your nice king guy goes I'm out of here rips his cloak off like but for other stupid things, huge prices are paid. And it just feels like there's plot armor that's way too fucking wound around these people. Again, this will lead to things people are familiar with, right? Because you have to get to this, you know, familiar area where Daenerys and the impact of the Game of Thrones can happen. And this being a prequel, I'm guessing people are liking this. If I'm just going to kind of try to, you know, wing it without, you know, knowing yet. Because what I do is I usually do these to get my thoughts out. You know, jot down a couple of notes here and there. And then afterwards I go and see some of my favorites and some of my not favorites, which I do on purpose. Uh, people who I don't feel like are like-minded with me and how they think of things. So once I'm done, I'll... I'll just dive in. I think people are going to like this. I think I'm just going to be the minority. 
You know, I'm not into this pacing, this type of material uh, displayed on the screen. It doesn't suit me. But am I going to, you know, I, I don't think I could recommend it. And I guess in a way I'm shitting on it from my point of view of I find these things bullshit. Like, it could be done so much better. Where someone else would just like, I don't give a fuck. It just, well, I have a friend. Well, I did speak to one person then. Because I have a friend who, you know, likes fucking everything. And I knew he liked it, but I was like, give me, you know, a comparison. And, and in a like manner, he said he liked it where I didn't. And he said, although he had more fun with um, Rings of Power and Wheel of Time which I liked a lot also. And I think um, they have a better balance of fun, excitement, wonder. I need that in my fantasy. I need a little bit of that. And this show tried to do that a little bit with the training of the dragons and how they bond to, you know, somebody and... I guess that's there, but this, you know, magic type thing is not really there. There's a hint at the winter, which I thought was fucking ridiculous. But okay, you know, she's got the dagger, and he relents and realizes he's going to make his princess next in line. And even when he has fucking babies with the princess, he's like, you know, I think he says he faltered once, but she is going to be the queen. And it's just fucking people go bananas, you know. And there's another fucking scene that's actually pretty cool, but when you think about it, it's kind of fucking bothers me now. So they got the princess, she who was never queen or whatever the fuck. Great actress, uh, you know. And they lock her in her room, and they're going to anoint fucking Aegon, I think. Is it Aegon? Aemon? Aegon. Again, fucking horrible fucking bullshit. And she gets taken out by two of the fucking idiots who have the same name. <laughs> it's just so stupid. It's Eric and Eric or something. And she gets lost in the crowd. And by the way, there's no way I believe the whole fucking scenario. I don't care if she's trying to remain hidden or not. Her presence, her bearing as a character. She's not getting pushed around in those throngs of people like that. It just didn't feel like that was... What would have happened? So she gets separated because they, they, they hand and all the people want all the fucking uh, citizens to watch the fucking coronation. And that'll lend favor to their succession, which it does, I guess. But she, in disguise, gets to her fucking dragon like it's not fucking guarded. So as they're doing this fucking coronation and, you know, he raises his sword, this stupid shit. The dragon comes bursting through the ground, and it's hundreds, maybe thousands of people have to be killed. Just, you just can't get around it. Maybe if you want to do the, you know, you do that thing where you can, like, put your fingers around the crowd, and you can guess. All right, so maybe it's not. Maybe it's, it just devastates the fucking dragon. It was a cool scene when it roars at them, and she's got her dragon, and <laughs> The fucking auto guy, the hand is like, open the doors, because people are trying to close the doors. And the first thing you realize is you don't want a fucking dragon caught in there where it doesn't think you can get out. Which is weird how it came through the ceiling when it must have gotten from a different direction. Anyway, you know, spectacular shit that kind of looks cool, might work, but just ultimately what happens? She just flies out. She didn't burn them to a crisp and... And again, you can't maybe change certain facts of the book, but just, again, tone and pacing just don't fit me. I can shit on it from my point of view that I think these things are outrageously dumb, these scenarios. But I'm not going to put it past this thing being successful or, you know, uh, a majority of people like it. And I guess it's going to be my kind of roundup of this again uh, the Sir Crispin guy fucking worst part of the show some of the casting is amazing to do the transition from kids to oh some of it's horrible 
some people feel like it's uh when i'm watching a role play thing and some people are doing like oscar you know grammy performances it's got everything however i could definitely see this improving i can uh because my biases notwithstanding there are elements of this that can work and now you've gotten through the garbage shit i can see them doing more jumps but i don't think there would be serious jumps and the show ends on a serious note you know she's fucking all mad whatever so you got through the first uh the politicking maybe you'll get because if there's a balance between the politic and, and the toning down of ridiculous shit people say for reasons that are interrupting the flow of other things i'd probably be more on board with this and say oh you know so i could see it you know getting into a second season and enjoying it i guess i'll uh, end that here house of the dragon not happy with it but i see some of the good things about it i can see people's enjoyment of it with me i'm biased and i'm you know i'm just more of a balance of fun wonder in my fantasy so you know like when i see the people casting in real time you know i get all goosebumps and giddy and you know gandalf with his staff and i don't see that much here. although you know game of thrones we have you know women popping out shadow ink babies or something so i don't know house of the dragon game of thrones prequel i didn't like it much in, in overall there are elements i think are you know amazing performances this is great i just don't like how everything connected how i'm supposed to believe certain setups and i think people are gonna like it and i don't know if that's me saying you know, being a hypocrite saying, I don't think I would recommend this. And maybe I should be saying it, Rick. Like, I don't want people to not watch anything. You know, but I guess it's more like like-minded people who would just know me for years and they like, listen to my podcast and like, they kind of know. But I don't think I would say to anybody, um, don't give something a shot, don't watch it. So it's up to you. I just found it a little too fucking tedious and morose and brooding and dark and circumstances that come out of nowhere to just service the plot and the great performances the superb fucking music just wasn't enough to just carry me through to the end of the season with a smile and go wow you know like this crispin guy you're supposed to hate him right like but it doesn't feel like it did with jamie or because you know, Jamie, you know, from the beginning, he pushes the kid out the window. He's fucked. He's never redeeming himself to a certain extent. But besides them butchering him at the end and fucking destroying his shit and all they did for him, his growth in the character is one of the best in the show. Worth watching. He's that good as an actor. The writing is that good. And ultimately, they shit on it. But anyway... Here I am trying to end these things. House of the Dragon, give it a shot, watch it. A prequel to Game of Thrones, set about 170 years. Getting ready for the Dance of Dragons, where the War of Succession for the Targaryens of Viserion, the whole thing gets, um, you know, gets heated up and it leads into eventually what we'll see with Daenerys. And actually, you know, if you think about it, they did do a flashback with young Ned Stark when he revealed John's parents and stuff. You could think that it can get it's closer to that, obviously. So, well, you'll see the um, John Snow's mother, maybe. So, I don't know how deep they'll go into that and connect it. But again, House of the Dragon, give it a shot. Might not be my cup of tea, but. I think there's quality in here. I think it's going to depend on what you tolerate, I guess, you know, personal stuff. All right. So take care, everybody. Till next time. Laters.